you granted the Generation Z the benefit of knowing mm. Andre Crouch, whom they've never and will never meet. Right. You know, you, and, and, and like you said, you know, bits and snippets of the song. Right. But right. when they hear the whole, how can I say thanks for the things that you've done for me? Things so undeserved that you gave to prove your love for me. Yes. Voices of million. When they hear that, yes. It will have, it'll have the children, it'll have the five year old singing to God be the glory. That is the key to what Myron Butler just did wow. with this my tribute. I, I, I talked to Bill Maxwell. Um, about a week and a half ago. Okay. I just, I just felt like getting in touch with him. And Bill Maxwell was the drummer for wow. Andre, and he was one of the main producers for Andre okay. Crouch. And, and man, we just, we just went back and forth talking about Andre. And my, my dream was always to be a disciple. Wow. An Andre Crouch <laughs> disciple. From the, from the time I was nine years old, mm. my dream was, and I would rehearse, I would put the two tall speakers that my mother had for her Wi-Fi, for her hi-fi, not Wi-Fi, hi-fi. <laughs> and I put, I yeah, and I put, I put the record on, put the speakers facing each other and lay down on my back with my head in between the speakers so I could hear every harmony. I'm doing this at nine years old, 10 years old, 11 years old. And my mother would say, fool, what are you doing? I said, I, and I said, I gotta learn these parts because one day I'm just gonna ask me to sing with them. Wow. And so I would learn all the parts to all the songs. Because it was something inside. Now, get this. That was when I was nine, I'm born, just born again. At 11 years old, Andre comes to our church. To your in church. Jamaica, oh. our church in Jamaica Queens to do a concert in 1971. Wow. They're driving in, in a van. From California a van. to New York in a van. Across country in a van with Andre Crouch and the Disciples on the van. He was, just, he was more popular in the white circles than he was in the black circles. Wow. Yeah, because he was affiliated with the, you know, the, uh, a Christian Businessman Association okay. with Ralph Carmichael, who did all of his orchestrations. Um, all of, he had a very strong multicultural following. Wow! But he came, you know, coming out of the Church of God in Christ. That's our greatest uh, accomplishment. He came to our church, and I begged my mother. It was seventy-one. I was eleven. I begged my mother, Mom, please, uh, can we go? <laughs> and it was a Tuesday night in October. Wow. wow. And she said, well, and she let me go. She took me to, and I sat on the front row. I asked Sandra about this. Wow. I sat on the front row, and I was 11 years old, and I, I was sitting next to Sandra, and I looked up at her, and I said, hi. And she said, hi, little guy. I said, this is what I said to her. You ain't saved. Oh, no, you didn't. Yeah, because you, you got on makeup. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I, she said, I guarantee you, I'm safe. <laughs> you told her because you, you got on makeup. Yes. yes. Oh, oh my God. I was, I was indoctrinated by 11 years. <laughs> Religion had indoctrinated me. And, and, and they sang. They sang the whole night. And when they finished, he went into the pastor's mm -hmm. tent. Everybody cleared the sanctuary, and I'm begging my mom, please, can I wait for him? And she said, no, you got to go to school. I said, I promise, I promise you I'm going to go to school like I had a choice. Right, um, right. And, <laughs> and I said, she saw something, and she said, okay, you can wait a little bit, but if, if it takes too long, you got to come on. Yeah. I sat on the front row. They turned all the lights off except for one light over the pulpit. And then maybe about 10 minutes later, Andre came out. And he saw me sitting there by myself. And Andre said, hey, little guy, uh, how are you? I said, I'm fine. He said, what's your name? I said, Donnie. He said, I'm Andre. I said, I know. <laughs> he, he said, uh, well, are you, are you, and he's talking to an 11-year-old. Are you born again? Because uh, Andre was all about evangelism. Are you, Andre wasn't about evangelism. He was like, are you born again? 
Yes. Andre was all about evangelism. He was not about the music. Wow. Andre was about evangelism. Are you born again? I said, yeah. He said, I was born again at nine. I said, me too. Wow. And he said, oh. He said, well, uh, do you sing? Do you play piano? I said, no. He said, I didn't either. My dad prayed for me. He's talking to an 11 year old. My dad prayed for me. And that's how I got the gift. I said, well, my dad can't pray for me because uh, he's not born again. Andre says, Andre says this, do you mind if I pray for you? Ah! And he laid his hands on my head. Jesus. And I'm about, I'm about to cry. Woo! He laid his hands on my head and said, Father, give him what you gave to me. Woo! Jesus. And that's how anybody knows Donnie McClurkin. Because Andre transferred. Yeah. Pastor Juan is teaching, he, he teaches this. Pastor Juan is teaches this. He said, if the anointing is genuine, it's two things. It is tangible yes. and it's transferable. Woo! Woo. Just, like, just like Elijah transferred the anointing to Elisha yeah. and Moses yeah. transferred it to Joshua. Yeah. And literally, that moment in time is where Donnie McClurkin got the anointing for his assignment. Oh. That was Andre's job. Now, now get that. That was in 71, man. Oh. Years go on. I'm, I'm 15, 16. Andre would send postcards to me. Are you house. serious? So it, wasn't just Every, that, it wasn't just that one time event. No. Oh. Because my, my aunt started singing with him. Her name was B. Carr. Okay. She, start, she started singing. She was the one saying, I surrender all live and Ah, uh -huh, okay. And 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 he would ask how I was doing, and she gave him my address, and he would send postcards. Wow. Every postcard would have nothing but a scripture on it. A postcard from wherever they were in, wherever our country they were in, a postcard with a scripture on it, and it'd say, tell me about the scripture when I see you. Knowing that he wasn't going to see me. Mm. Tell me about the scripture. He, so he made me study the Bible. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and that's how I met him. And then as the years went on, uh, and, and the recording started, you know, I, I formulated a group. Yeah. And every crowd song was a part of the group. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm supposed to be doing an interview no, with you. No, no, no. I want group. this. I want this. I want this. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and so I taught all of the crowd songs, seven singers. You know, four part harmony. I did yeah. seven singers because talking ah. seven singers, and I did I did crowd songs because yeah, 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 harmonies. and his songs were really yeah. poignant, and and so finally they were doing the color purple mm. in eighty three. Okay. I'm at my mother's house because I lived. In, I wasn't. I wasn't grown. <laughs> I was living twenty three at my mother's house, and the phone rang, and it was Andre. Andre, and I'm, I'm like, oh, who? He said, hey, hey, Donnie, this is Andre Crouch. <laughs> and, and I'm saying, who? This is Andre Crouch, man. How you doing? And I said, I'm doing fine. And I was freaking out because nobody was home. Everybody was at work. I didn't have a job. I was a bum. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, and he asked, so what are you doing? I said, well, I'm not doing anything. He said, why don't you come out here to California? Wow. He flew me out to California and my sister Marlene, because I needed to shower. And we went out. I got out at 11 o'clock to LA. She picked me up at the airport. We drove to his house in Woodland Hills. Wow. Got there about 12 midnight, and I'm nervous. My heart is racing, because now he's under a couch, under a couch, under a couch. And he met us at the door. And we talked till about three o'clock in the morning. Went to the piano. He played. We sang. Wow. Your voice is like a trumpet, man. Your voice is like a trumpet. It's like a trumpet. <laughs> Your voice is like a trumpet. I love it. Trumpet, yeah. And uh, from that point on, we became friends. Yeah, yeah. And and I reminded him how we how, how he prayed for me. We cried. We prayed in the, in the dining room, and and that's how everything started with me. That was 83. Took me to the studio. I sat back, watched him. I write, always remember Jesus. Huh. 
if you could have been in that session. Oh. And he was just, he was ambidextrous and his hands were like lightning. That oh. man could play that piano. Fine. I, I get a deal with, with, a Warner, with Warner Alliance. Uh-huh. That was, nine, now we're 96. Okay. And who do you want to produce it? I want Bill Mack. <laughs> I go and sit with Bill. He says, okay, I want to do We Expect You from Andre Crouch. Yeah, 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 yeah. He says, hold on a second. I was sick at the time. I was sick out in California mm-hmm. at the studio. He comes back. We're talk, after he comes back. We're talking, we're talking at three. I get on the piano. I play a little bit. And I'm sitting at the, I finished playing the rough r- reference mm-hmm. so he can give it to his musicians. And Andre comes in. Oh. Bill went and called Andre. Andre plays the song oh. and says, can I sing with it on you, man? Can I sing with it on you? And I said, <laughs> and I said yeah. He made me stand in the room. I couldn't go in the booth and sing. He in made the, me stand in, in the room with the piano while he played. Oh. And then oh. he comes in, he comes in, so until you return, Lord, we will keep fine. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yes, we will. You know, and <laughs> that was my crowning joy. That was on my first solo project. We expect you. Wow. And, wow. and, and from then, then we left from mentor to friendship. Yeah. And he, yeah. Would, he would just call me just to talk to me, just to make sure I was okay. Even one yeah. time he called me because he was feeling a little down. And I mean, at that, that was the kind of friendship we started to develop. Then when he started getting sick, I would start getting sick. Sandra would tell us, you know, your, your, your dad, your dad is, is really holding me. And a couple others, your dad is not doing well. And, and they're like, Israel Hope was in the room with him when he, when, uh, when he passed away, I believe. Wow. And all of these things were part and parcel. If I did a CD, I'm going to get a call from Andre. Man, this is, this is something, man. This is, this is really good. Wow. And, and that's, that relation, and me and Sandra, like this. Oh. Yeah. So, so you doing this brings me back to a place oh, where I'm saying, okay, it is not lost. Yeah, yeah. It, it is not lost. What was your, and I'm sorry, I took all this time talking. I, Dang it. I'm that's a terrible the, no, interview. no, this, that is the interview just because that level of insight. I mean, even there, there's so many things and they're starting from when you said the anointing is tangible and transferable. Like that, that will never leave me. That will never, and just you, you, you showing how it started from, you know, uh, the, the, the him praying for you, and it went from mentor to friendship, and all of these transitions, and and then how even there were points when you are encouraging and pouring back into him, so it's not just one sided, just all of that, all of that, that's what we need I, 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 you know just right now it's you know everybody's trying to sound like this and everybody's but it's these stories it's this mm-hmm. that, that, that fortifies us to know that the, the, the principles in the bible are true and in life like you see it happening and just that level of change that level of connection for me it just makes my heart do this and i'm like wow wow so that right there completely mm-hmm. That's the gold mine. Everything you just said for me, is the, even because I found the interview, I, I don't know where it was, but it was used, and maybe Shirley and Sandra. And that's when mm-hmm. Sandra was talking about how, how uh, I guess there was a, an attempted kidnapping on Andre when he was, was because the, the thing that I even, and this was just my perception from the out looking in, is the way uh, Sandra kind of covered him and protected yeah. him. And, how a lot of times if you're in that position or that office or station, 
and you kind of do the same thing, there's always this you know, tendency to want to get the same level of notoriety or whatever that is that the person you're covering. And she, it, it felt like she understood her calling and her placement in her brother's life. And it was right. I'm not gonna never let anything and just that level of 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 of, of connection connection is just even the wrong because I don't know the, the right word, but that for me it just it drew me in even outside of the music. Because I'm like for someone to have that level of love, yes, I mean I'm I'm an only child so I don't you know, I don't necessarily get the, the, the sibling, you know, kind of thing, but just to see someone give their life covering someone, mm -hmm. yep. I was like, wow, wow, wow. And, and, that, and that, was Sandra's, that was Sandra from top to bottom. Wow. She was Andre's security, yeah. uh, as far as to make him, make him feel like he's never yeah. alone. You know, because being twins, that, that was an age old yeah. thing. They were, you know, and she made sure that, Andre was safe, yeah. safeguarded because of the kidnapping experience that caused him to stutter yeah. when he was a kid. But that that's the whole the 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 element of, of family, the element of anointing that was on her as well as him. Yeah. That was the thing that made this whole crouch experience what it was oh. and, and and what it is. And yeah. you carry that same anointing now from Andre. Yeah. I, I I was blessed to have him pray for me. Mm. But now you, there's, there's a story in the Bible about Joseph's bones and Joseph's grave. Yeah. And there was a man that died and they threw the man in the grave and didn't know it was Joseph's grave. And when the man's body, the dead man's body hit the bones, mm. the anointing of, jo of Joseph caused him to resurrect. Woo! And and so that same anointing, even after death, yeah, is passed on to Myron Butler, Ooh. who oh. honors our father in gospel music, like yeah. like so many of us should have done, and mm. surely I would have done if I would have thought about it. And <laughs> and you have really caused the generations to be blessed because you took the time to put a project together that would reach them with musicality that is second to none, never been duplicated since. Yeah. And he, he's had that peculiar anointing. The word peculiar doesn't mean strange. Yeah. It, it's an old English word that means specifically designated to one. Say it one more time, and, specifically and designated to one. To one person, specifically designated to one person. Meaning that if you were in a peculiar relationship, that meant that you were in a monogamous relationship with one person. It's an old English word, yeah. and and you 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 you've done that. You've shown the generations this kind of peculiar music form that God only gave to Andre that has not been duplicated since. Absolutely, right. This, this is yours. That was your assignment for this moment, you know. And that's the thing. Tell me about. The songs on the project. Oh. oh. Okay. 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 All right. Oh. So. Yeah. <laughs> songs. Okay. Uh. For me, um, uh, songs were because, you know, I I think about and and the the thing that I knew going into the project just from a very uh, basic realistic level is number one you cannot cover the scope of the catalog of Andre Crouch in one record it is not possible uh, there's not two and, and and too many great songs that everybody everybody knows so for me it was the songs that, that that was special to me I remember you know hearing we are not ashamed and it was like introducing me scripture you know, and so you have that, you have my tribute, which is, you know, the, 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 the lyrics, even aside from the musicality and the, the epicness and regalness of the song, just the words, just the lyrics drew me in. Uh, you have, you know, songs like Right Now, you have, of course, The Blood Will Never Lose Its Power, uh, uh, you got Living This Kind of Life, you got, you know, all of, and, and, and even at, uh, uh, actually what I did, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, I remember 
uh, Milton Brunson, uh, Thomas Community Singers put out uh, No More, Walk the but Fire Your Next Time. And then I'm listening. Right. Wait a minute. Did this, this, had, to, this had to be inspired by, <laughs> by. So what I did is I was like, well, everybody knows Can't Nobody Do Me Like Jesus. So I take Can't Nobody Do Me Like Jesus and I marry it with the groove a fire next time. And so just, and, and that's the thing for me that there was so, the, 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 the levels and layers of musicianship and creative like epicness. I mean, like this is like, how do you do that? Where does all that come? And because it's like, like, like I said at the beginning to me, gospel was in this little box and gospel only sounded like that. And when I'm listening to Andre, I'm like, no, like this, that it, it, it's it's wide, it's deep, it's it's got so much layer and, and and ingenuity to it, and I'm just like, so for me, it was that it was. I knew I couldn't cover all of the songs. I wanted uh, to, to I wanted to have songs that were that I loved, and that I thought some of the, the people that grew up on Andre music would re readily recognize, but also songs that were would introduce this generation. To kind of, Cause I remember hearing "It's Truth Still Marches On." Yeah, I was like, "Oh my God!" You know, and and and, and of course, we live in in, in in this age where every it's not the truth; it's everybody. It's my truth. And I'm like, right. "No, his truth still marches on." And 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 so it was trying to interweave all of that in with the you know with the Jesus is the answer for the world today or the soon and very soon or through it all because you know that, those are the ones that, that, that everybody knows at the top so let's try to put some layers to it and kind of you know incrementally bring everybody down into oh I didn't know so that was that was kind of the, the intentionality behind selecting the songs and, and kind of you know trying to put the project together man but I'm telling you, those songs the real dynamic uh, variances of Andre's musicality. Yeah, you know, yeah. like you said, he didn't have one specific style. Right. And, he, and um, um, he got into this uh, Steely Dan uh, yeah. mode. <laughs> Don't give up, stand and fight for what you know is right. right. And he, he would do crazy things. Um, <laughs> Hollywood scene, yeah. uh, just about the Hollywood right. scene, the Kim I mean, he had such a way of making stuff work. And then when he wanted to promote Sandra, yeah. his sister, he took one of her songs and said, let me sing mm. it first. And that's that was, we need to hear from you. Yeah. We need a word from, Sandra wrote that song. Right. You know, and, I'm telling you, he was just, he was just the quintessential David of our time. Mm. He was the David, because he wrote songs that everybody could sing. Yeah. Now, see, we write songs that are, that are trendy. We write songs that are, that are, that are flashy. We write songs that got you know, the music going this way and the vocals right. going that way. Right. And, but nobody can sing it but that artist. Right, right. Nobody can sing that, but but that artist. But Andre wrote songs that everybody could sing. Yeah. When he did, when he did, um, Jesus is the answer. Mm -hmm. He did that at Carnegie Hall. That was from live at Carnegie Hall, and they packed that place out in seventy three, seventy four. Okay. They packed that place out so much that they had about five, six, seven hundred people outside that couldn't get in. They wow. had to take it across the street and do a second concert at Calvary Baptist Church across the street from Carnegie Hall. Wow. That was the kind of stuff that was happening with Andre. And, and he would just sit down at the piano and start writing. When he did Jesus the Answer, they hadn't rehearsed that. They hadn't rehearsed it? No. That was impromptu. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're telling me Jesus is the answer is one of those, hey, y'all, y'all come around the piano. And I, yep. and I just, yep. what is that? What is that? that that's, that's the real musical anointing. Oh. That's the David anointing. Yeah. And he sat at the piano in Carnegie Hall and just went, Jesus is the answer for the world today. And the musicians would catch on. Wow. Musician to catch up. Throw it to Sandra. Sandra has to make up a verse on the spot. If you have some questions, 
in the corners of your mind. Wow. And <laughs> they had to go back in the studio in 74 and add vocal <laughs> stuff to it. <laughs> when that was kind of free. Wait a minute. I'm 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 just like, okay, because you know everybody now they have this word, you know, we just gonna vibe, we just gonna vibe it out. And 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 for lack of better terms, that was but you don't vibe out a song as monumental as Jesus is the answer. Like oh, an, a live recording. A live like, recording. It's thousands of people out there just and here you talk <laughs> now you're doing like group choir rehearsal and group choir rehearsal births yes. this amazing song right in front of everybody while the tape is rolling. Yes. At Carnegie Hall. At Carnegie Hall. I'm telling you, he was a monogene. He was literally a monogene. He was one of a kind. 